Okay, now we're gonna get into how it works and a, a chalk talk. My name is Ryan Davis. I am a senior product marketing manager at ExtraHop, and I'll walk through how it works uh, specifically to our RevealX cloud product. Okay, before I, I jump in, I wanna give you guys a higher kind of architecture of, uh, of ExtraHop as, um, as a, an entire kind of workflow. So on the left you have uh, on-prem data centers, remote sites or remote branch offices, and then cloud. And we can essentially take data from an on-prem environment or a remote site, and we would run real-time stream processing uh, line rate decryption, and we would help automatically discover and classify all assets within a customer's environment. We have also the ability to leverage global, global search and query to jump into records, and then a continuous packet capture to jump all the way into network packets. And that top line is alluding to our XDROP Cloud, our RevealX Cloud product, and how uh, it it leverages both AWS, Azure, and GCP. I'm gonna break down how it works specific to an AWS environment. And uh, this is actually an AWS slide when they announced tra the new traffic mirroring feature. So typically in a cloud environment, users would have to rely on logs or SIM and endpoint detection and response, so endpoint. The two data sources were, were either logs or endpoints. Network traffic was available, but it was, it was cumbersome. So back in 2013, we launched our uh, RPCAP solution. Uh, we needed to, to deploy an agent to gather traffic. Now, with the release of VPC traffic mirroring, it allows us to essentially have a virtual tap. So in an on-prem environment, we can tap the data center, and now in the cloud, uh, we're able to leverage a virtual tap. And this, this slide shows inbound and outbound packets coming in and out of a VPC. And by default, all traffic mirroring sessions are turned off, but if a customer wanted to turn on a traffic mirroring session, they would spin up a monitoring instance that they would want to point the traffic mirroring session to, and they would attach a traffic mirroring session to a ENI or elastic network interface. Are you capturing the payload or yes. just the header? Nope, the, the whole packet. Once the traffic mirroring session has attached to an ENI at an EC2 instance or, or a, a workload, it can pass a copy of the network traffic to another monitoring instance, or in our case, it would be to RevealX Cloud. So we are out of band, we are not deploying any agents, and we are taking a copy of this uh, inbound and outbound traffic and sending it to our solution. So what this looks like from a extra hop workflow is on the left you would have a customer VPC. We've represented workloads with the square boxes and you would attach a traffic mirroring feature to each of those square boxes and point all of those traffic mirroring sessions to a secure VPC. Now this is where it gets interesting and it's something that no other vendor has, is doing leveraging the traffic mirroring feature. We're pointing the sessions to a secure VPC that will then send it to our SaaS solution. So we now have a network detection and response SaaS based uh, solution in AWS that allows us to leverage all the benefits of SaaS uh, and still provide that NDR visibility that customers need. The product will look the exact same as it will on-prem, so you can still leverage your real-time real stream processing, your, your uh, records, your global search and query, and then you can also take advantage of, of ML, with, which is already in the cloud. If the customer wanted to access their data, they would log in through the public internet and uh, through a web UI. So. I might pay egress charges for that data transfer. There, there is an egress charge that would happen when data leaves the customer's VPC. Uh, there are creative ways to uh, work around that egress charge. And I will talk about another solution 
um, that keeps customer data within the same VPC. Yes. Are you hanging the SaaS solution in every region, or is there one in one region? It it is in if. A customer wanted to deploy the SaaS solution, they would need to deploy it for every availability zone. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the SaaS solution is customer owned. It's not. It's not your. No, it it is ours. But if they had multiple VPCs in different regions, yep. they would send the data to a SaaS solution that's in that region, to our SaaS solution in the region. So there's no master or roll up uh, version. We're of not that. sending data outside of the region. Okay, that's what I want. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Uh, is it in GovCloud? It is. It's currently not in GovCloud. Timeline for GovCloud? I, d I don't have a timeline yet, but we're our our Fed team is actively working to to get GovCloud up and running. Okay. Any other questions on this this workflow? These tunnels that you have to create between, so, so basically you transfer all that traffic. Is it automated? Um, how is that deployed? Uh, that created or have to be manually created for each VPC. Uh, Corey, do you want to? Yep. Yeah, or do you want to tackle it, Jeff? It's you saw the button uh, that he showed to actually turn on traffic mirroring, which you do on an ENI basis. Um, if you do have multiple VPCs, and most of our customers do, you do configure it on VPC by VPC basis to um, to come to Extra Hubs, reveal XCloud, and. You can, correct me if I'm wrong, you can use APIs and automation to do so, but you do have to somehow go do the work on each VPC. Okay. So, so then if, so the secure VPC tunnel, so you're going from VPC to VPC, are you using VPC peering? Like, like yes. re, re, st standard VPC peering. Okay, so if a customer has implemented the VMware, or the, excuse me, the AWS Transit Gateway Hub, mm -hmm. and, and obviously transit of peering, peering doesn't work, do you go to the Transit Gateway? and then route to the VPCs? So today we don't support uh, the transit gateway, but that's something that we're, we're looking at adding very very quickly. Okay, so right now you have to do, if, if you have multiple VPCs, you would peer to each one. That's right. Yeah, okay. I, I can elaborate on that a little bit. Um, so we worked really closely with, um, with AWS on the launch of this capability. Hmm. Um, they have a couple of different ways to actually mirror the traffic. They, they have a bunch. Uh, <laughs> yes, um, some of them have limitations, yep. um, right? Some of them don't. I don't think they currently support UDP, for example, right. things like that. So from, for our security mm -hmm. use cases and products, it's really important to see all the traffic. Uh, so the VPC mirroring um, is, is the one that suits our use cases best. We're talking with them about some of the other mechanisms, mm -hmm. as well as some forthcoming mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And when they will allow us to have all the functionality our customers need, um, we'll likely look at adding those as well. OK, cool. Thank you. So I'm assuming by that middle graphic, there's some sort of big data analytics taking place um, with this information that is being sent over to your solution. Am I correct there? Yeah, so it's leveraging uh, our, our on-prem. It's leveraging our product that you get the same value you would on-prem as you do in the cloud. Jeff will walk through the demo so you can get a, a good idea of exactly the power behind what, you're going, what, what our product can provide. Um, I think once you see the demo, you'll get a better understanding of like that big data analytics and exactly what ExtraHop is, is providing to a customer. And my other question is, do you have any um, pushback from customers that say, we don't want our data um, to go? Yes, so that is a great segue to the <coughs> RevealX AMI or the AMI solution. And essentially, this is the, the same uh, product as RevealX Cloud, except the traffic mirroring sessions point to an Amazon machine image inside the customer's VPC. Okay. So data will not leave the customer's VPC. Uh, it eliminates a lot of the, the privacy concerns. or the, the, Does that eliminate our egress problems as well? There's no egress because uh, there's, there's, no egress. there's no data. But it's not a SaaS model. The customer is responsible for the deployment and management of uh, basically, our, our, the, the VM that spins up and runs extra hop. But is it cheaper than the egress cost? I mean, <laughs> at that point, <laughs> you, you, you eat the burden. The, the, the customers I run into who don't want their, the data or the payload exiting don't are usually big cost. financials, and right. they don't care about cost. They don't care about cost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it looks like you still have to go out to talk to your SaaS to pull in items like, I guess, your, your ML 
Well, yeah, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on my chalkboard actually going through the data security model because okay. we thought maybe you guys would be interested in how we secure our cloud infrastructure. <laughs> Not us, no. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care about yeah. Any questions about the, the AMI model? I guess we'll wait for the chalkboard session. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Then you guys are in luck because yeah. it is chalk blam. <laughs> but I do have to say the fact that this is agentless is a huge plus. I second that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Why? I'm just a guy of curiosity. Why? <laughs> because agents are the worst. Because I, who's going to install an agent? I have a lot of customers who will not install agents. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the problem with most of the customers I talk to is not that they won't install agents, it's they won't st install any more agents. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just get yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Agent that's fatigue. precisely correct. Exactly. Yeah. Um,